All right, so let's talk about trig. Trigonometry, that sounds cool. Trigonometry, stuff like sine, cosine, tangent. What does that all mean? Well, we're not gonna really emphasize that here so much. I'm just gonna tell you how to use Math Studio as far as inputting and outputting certain results to deal with trig. So the point of this video is to talk about math. So let's get into that. Now, if you remember, if we type in four and then RAD, it picks it up as a radian using math Studio. So again, what I'm doing when I type this in, and you have to do it kind of fast, it's kind of a finicky software right now. It's still super sweet, but I type in RAD and then I go to my variable and I click in rad, this stands for radian, and I double click on that and it will turn it blue. Sometimes I, you gotta do it a little bit faster, otherwise it doesn't work. So let me get rid of that for rad. And then you find your double click, it's blue now, click equals, you gotta click equals there. And then it spits out the number four. What it's doing is, again, rad, radian, it's a dimensionless unit. So it's just going four times one is four. Awesome, sweet, four times one is four. Now, if we're wanting it in degrees, notice what happens. So if I type in four degrees, however, DEG, and I click equals, it's not four. What it's doing here, it's saying four degrees is this many radians. So it's actually doing that whole conversion from degrees to radians, so it's it's computing so if I type in four degrees as radians it's really this four degrees as radians is 0 0.0698 radians here and if you want to see it actually RAD if you don't believe me let me do that one more time rad it is really 0 0.0698 radians. So that's how you do it. Um, so we have to be careful of radians and degrees, first off. When we type in sine of, let's say, 30 degrees, so I click sine and then I write 30 DEG right here. So I type in 30 DEG. I go to degrees. It's very important that I include the degrees here because this value of 0.5 is much different than this. You have to include the degrees in math in order for it to compute it correctly. Otherwise, it's going to assume your angle here is, this is radians. It's going to assume that this is 30 radians right here. So you, if you're gonna do something, you have to make sure you include the DEG for it to compute correctly. On your calculator, it's not, the, it's not that case. You have to go in, okay, if you're gonna type it in on your calculator, 30 DEG, you can actually get away with typing sine of 30 as long as your mode is adjusted to degrees. You could write sine of 30 is 0.5 on your calculator, but math is a little smarter, so you have to be very careful and put DEG in there if you're input if you're inputting degrees into sine. So if you're going to write cosine of 60 degrees, we go DEG. We double click here, right arrow, right arrow. So we're all the way over. Click equals. It's 0.5, and so. We can do it like that. Again, we have to type in DEG, that's cosine. And if we're wanting to type anything with tangent, I don't know, what is tangent of zero? Tangent of zero is zero. Um, so this is how you deal with sine, cosine, and tangent. Now, in order to compute, let's say, an angle. So let's say I wanted to figure out not necessarily what cosine of 60 degrees is, but I'm wanting to do the cosine inverse of 0.5 and figure out how many degrees it is. It typically, you see the notation written in math where you have this negative one up top. It's not the reciprocal symbol. It stands for arc cosine. It stands for the arc 
the measure of your arc. So it's giving 0.5, it's spitting that out. So I'm not gonna actually type in cos inverse of 0.5 to get 60 degrees. I'm gonna type in, cause Smath doesn't realize that, unfortunately. Actually, I kinda like this more. I'm gonna type in A cosine. That stands for arc length of cosine. So if I'm gonna type A cos, this again a cos I just put an a in front of it a lot of other programs you could type arc cos but they do a cos of 0.5 so we're gonna type in 0.5 right here and you're like oh it should spit out 60 degrees and it's not spitting oh this is because this is in radians so I have to type in D E G over to the right I have to click on this Again, I'm doing this kind of fast. I have to click on this block box right here. And if I'm wanting to say, well, what's this in degrees? Because I don't really care about radians right now. I want to convert this to degrees. This is my angle in degrees given a value of 0.54. So I'm wanting to convert this to degrees. We see here, DEG, double click. It spits out 60 degrees. So it actually returns to us our angle right here. And the same process happens with um, sine and, and tangent. Um, so let's say if we wanted to do sine of 35 degrees. Here, let's, let's make this a little different. It's this value. So if I type in a sine, arc sine of this number, it will actually spit out, well, what 35 degrees is in radians. If I click equals now, and then I actually have to write DEG over to the right of it. I double click my unit, click off, and it gives me 35. It's close enough. This number actually goes on for a little bit longer. It's about 35 degrees. It takes it and it snaps it back to what our original angle is in degrees. So that is it as far as how to input these things. Again, with tangent, you do the same thing. You just type in A tan. So I just wanted to go over that real quick. So again, sign that negative one power thing, on SMATH, it's A sign, it's arc sign. So that's it.